Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Libric. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion of launching Bahrain Merida Cycling Team. His Highness Sheikh Nasser briefed His Majesty the King on the goal strategies and the various championships that the team will participate in, in addition to the plans that will help in developing this sport.
His Majesty then delivered a speech on this occasion and said that this launching is considered the first in the Middle East Eastern level and includes a number of international champions and professionals. His Majesty wished them all success and expressed confidence that this team will enhance the status of Bahrain on the world sports map. He praised the efforts of the team and their keenness to achieve the best interests of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty hailed the launching of the sport by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, which reflects His Highness's support to all sports and his role in encouraging Bahrainis to participate in them. His Majesty also expressed thanks and appreciation to the official sponsors of the Bahrain Merida Cycling Team and for their cooperation to achieve the desired aspirations. He wished His Highness and the team success in this sport. His Highness Sheikh Nasser then delivered the following speech. It was a dream come true. You taught us how to think big, how to put a vision, and to work towards it. Alhamdulillah, the idea of creating a cycling team, not just a normal cycling team, but a professional cycling team that would join the World Tour, and not just be am amongst the uh, teams, but also to compete in uh, many big races, tours, and classic races as well. So, me and my colleagues over here, Your Majesty, are now here. This is Team Bahrain Marine, and this is the core of the team. Those cyclists over there, Your Majesty, are the ones who are going to be cycling, competing, and raising the flag all over the world. So, we have high hopes for them. All of the team and management will be providing them everything they need and inshallah we will be participating in all of the UCI uh, races. Last but not least, Your Majesty, I would like to thank our sponsors because we presented them the idea and they said okay and we went forward. If they declined, we would have just continued dreaming about this team, Your Majesty. But alhamdulillah, many thanks to them. They made our dream come true. And it's all, all one uh, effort, Allah Tawar Amruk, that everything now, all what we see here is, inshallah, a way forward to success. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister chaired a work meeting in Ghdaybiya Palace to discuss the current developments and uh, conditions on the regional and international levels. He directed to work on strengthening and promoting the interests and objectives of the Kingdom of Bahrain according to the Gulf U.S. relations with the new U.S. administration to promote common interests. His Royal Highness also noted the importance of coordination and collective action to maximize Gulf gains. His Royal Highness affirmed that U.S. Gulf relations and especially Bahrain-U.S. relations have a long history and its bilateral ties should be stronger and more stable. He highlighted that the new U.S. administration under the leadership of the president-elect Donald Trump will be an opportunity to strengthen these ties and that the GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, especially Bahrain, are a key ally in supporting the security and stability of the region. He also stressed that it could, should be treated as such to give priority to the strategic interests of both sides within a unified Gulf policy to ensure the promotion of peace, security, 
security and development in the region. During the meeting, the Prime Minister directed concerns authorities uh, to review the previous stage and uh, the effectiveness of policies to deal with challenges with an aim to create a complete vision that guarantees the development and growth despite the economic and political global challenges. His Royal Highness also noted that in spite of the risk of economic and security challenges with proper planning can convert into elements that lead to more progress and development in various fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Qadibiya Palace a number of royal family members and senior officials. His Royal Highness discussed with the audience topics regarding local affairs and affirmed the government's keenness to enhance awareness regarding Bahraini heritage and its history and values. He stressed that the kingdom has a rich history that should be benefited from or benefited from or for, from for economic and tourism purposes. He also discussed topics on the regional and international levels and stress that terrorism is now threatening the whole world and its ideological and intellectual terrorism which requires the need to form strong coalitions to combat it. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today a number of GCC and Arab ambassadors led by Kuwaiti ambassador to the kingdom and uh, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corp, Sheikh Hazam Mbarak Al Sabah. The attendees congratulated His Royal Highness on uh, behalf of the leaders and people of their countries for the successful medical checkups that His Royal Highness underwent, wishing him abundant health and to continue his march of progress to the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed pride in the sincere brotherly feelings and requested the ambassadors to convey his greetings to their leaders and governments. He highlighted the political and economic challenges faced by Arab countries, which requires more cooperation and coordination. He expressed confidence of Arab leaders in overcoming these challenges and hopes that the next Arab summit will be another opportunity to enhance cooperation and Arab joint action. His Royal Highness added that the Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes any kind of efforts that aim to strengthen cooperation and enhance strategic relations that are based on mutual respect and common interests. Sheikh Hazam Mbarak Al Sabah affirmed that His Royal Highness is a Gulf and Arab icon, affirming that the happiness of all Gulf and Arab countries of His Royal Highness's successful medical results reflects the importance of His Royal Highness among the countries.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today international wildlife consultant Dr. Nicholas Christopher Fox. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness to preserve the national heritage, especially traditional sports such as falconry. He affirmed that falconry is linked to Arab heritage in general and to Bahrain in particular. He added that Bahrain is keen on maintaining the sport in order to consolidate and enhance national heritage and its history. His Royal Highness praised uh, the contributions of Dr. Fox to the wildlife and falconry on the regional and international levels, affirming the kingdom's keenness to benefit from the international experiences in this field. BDF, the Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief Marshal Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received today at his office the son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, First Lieutenant His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. During the meeting, the Commander-in-Chief praised the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman in developing the BDF. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, launched today Bahrain Merida Cycling Team in an official ceremony attended by the team members, officials and sponsors. He unveiled the team's strategic vision, its goals and ambitions, as well as the international events that the team will take part in. He added that his keenness on promoting Bahrain on the international level has led to forming this team. His Highness noted the kingdom will become a hub for the sport, affirming uh, during his opening speech the role of hosting such sports in Bahrain. He pointed out that cycling is open to everyone, noting the importance of reinforcing athletic concepts in the Bahraini community. Amongst the goals and visions of His Highness Sheikh Nasser was to cultivate the culture of creating Bahraini champions who are able to honor their country in international events. He emphasized that the development of the cycling sport in the kingdom will contribute to discovering young athletic talents. Sheikh Nasser continued to reveal the team's event plan for 2017, which will start in Argentina and Spain this month. At the end of his speech, Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and appreciation to the team's sponsors. He noted the importance of the cooperation between the public and private sectors in this regard. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Governor of the Southern Governorate, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Hisham al Joder and officials from sponsoring com companies as well as local Arab and international media representatives. Team Merida includes 27 professional cyclists from around the world, led by the Italian champion Vincenzo Nibali. It also includes a section or a selection of the most famous international trainers, as well as a fully equipped medical team. The team's general manager, Brint Copiland, said in his speech that the team's integration will allow it to reach its desired goals. Wolfgang Renner, Merida Europe's CEO, expressed his pleasure in the partnership between the company and Bahrain. As for the team members, they expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for laying the team's foundation stone. They presented His Highness with the team's official shirt.
we have at the moment three years contract, but a possibility to moving on. And uh, Merida, what I explained in my speech, we had a, to a great mountain bike team with in 12 years, yeah, and we it's our goal to have a partnership with Bahrain, yeah, a long term too. We need to to listen again to to improve our motivation for the for the incoming season. And uh, I think that sport is it's improving. It. It's it's really I'm, I'm agree 100 percent with the, with Shakil Nasser because the sport is really important and. I think that in the future we will see more people that are going to ride the bike. Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah held a meeting today with the Minister of Interior Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in the presence of the President and members of Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee, members of the Representatives Council as well as the Deputy Interior Minister and Inspector General and the Head of Public Security and Assistant Undersecretary for Legal Affairs at the Ministry of the Interior. Speaker of the Representatives highlighted that the Interior Ministry's role in maintaining Bahrain's security and implementing the law. He stated that the meeting comes to discuss the recent security developments in Bahrain in order to reinforce cooperation between the parliament and the government for the benefit of the kingdom and its people. He added that it is everyone's duty to preserve the stability of the country against internal and external challenges, aiding the sacrifices made by police officers for that purpose. Representative Speaker condemned the terrorist attack on Joe Prison that resulted in the death of a police officer and the escape of prisoners, which unveils further threats that target Bahrain from terrorist groups. Minister of Interior delivered a speech in which he stressed that the negligence of a number of officers which led to the escape of the prisoners should, be, or should not be generalized to include all loyal officers who exert their utmost efforts to do their duties. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the President and members of the Representatives Council for their efforts in reinforcing national unity to face regional challenges. He also briefed the audience on the details of Joe Prison's escape. He said that the investigation process and evidence found by security bodies led to identifying and capturing a number of suspects who helped carry out or carrying out the escape operation, including the owner of the car that was used in the escape, in addition to other wanted terrorists in various security cases. He added that they identified four suspects of attacking and helping prisoners escape, as well as the vehicle registration number and its features. The wanted suspects are... Mohammed Jassim Mohammed Jassim Al Abid, 28 years old, resident of Hamad Town. Hamid Jassim Mohammed Jassim Al Abid, 28 years old, resident of Hamad Town. Hassan Ali Mohammed Fardan Al Shukr, 22 years old, resident of Bani Jamra. Mahmoud Yusuf Habib Hassan Yahya, 22 years old, resident of Bani Jamra. The Minister of Interior stressed that negligence is behind the escape of the 10 prisoners, adding that a number of officials and members of Jao Reformation and Rehabilitation Center were referred to prosecution affiliated to the court's directorate of the Interior Ministry. He also briefed the audience on the procedures that have been taken after the incident, including information or informing the public prosecution as well as monitoring and following the vehicle that was used in the operation, a 2008 black Jeep with a license plate 547672. The authorities are still looking for the vehicle. They also searched a number of residents of the suspects. He added that an investigation committee was formed in order to investigate further and that checkpoints were placed all around the country in order to protect citizens and residents. The interior minister explained the details of the escape that was planned before, adding that shooting the vehicle by the watchtowers is undisputable. According to the briefing, Joe's center is well equipped with 600 security cameras and the guards are well armed to deal with all possible circumstances. The Interior Minister said that the centre is watched by six different bodies and that bribes are found everywhere, not just in prisons, adding that whoever was involved in this operation will be held accountable despite of their position. He added that they have throttled 15 attempts to escape before, which proves the capabilities of loyal officers. The Interior Minister said that the officer who lost his life while performing his national duty, Abdus Salam Saif, was shot before starting his shift, adding that the terrorists escaped from a gate that was open for the cleaning car and that they used a drone with a camera. 
The Minister of Interior affirmed that all legal and security measures are taken to reform the situation and address the neglect in reformation and rehabilitation centers, noting the development of the center's infrastructure, which has been done earlier, as well as establishing new buildings and introducing reformation events for the center's inmates. He also stressed the importance of developing legislations to help security officers in combating terrorism, noting the role of representatives in supporting the safety of Bahrain and its people. The interior minister explained to the council the details of the escape and the armed assault on the guards, as well as the efforts exerted by the ministry. A committee formed under the directives of the minister had conducted a preliminary investigation. The committee concluded that the escape was due to the negligence of the administration and a possible collusion between the escapees and some officers. In light of the investigation, the minister has ordered the suspension of a number of officers. The names of other officers who participated in the attack and the escape will be announced today.